don't think you want to look at my oops my fan there we go and zooming in a bit just getting everything set up i'm gonna wait a few minutes after i get set up see if anybody else comes to color with me today okay I hope you guys got your April calendar today. Meadow, can you shut my door? Sorry about the very loud children. Here we go. Okay. So we're going to be practicing clothing patterns. Um, there's lots of different things that you can do with clothing. These are some of um, the animal prints that I've done in the past for clothes. Hello, Miss Donna. Hello. Um, so, um, we have animal prints and then there's also some um, like Christmas type patterns that you can put on. Um, oh my God, my brain is fried today. I'm so sorry. Um, but like flowers, um, there's stripes, there's chevrons. There's just so many different things that you can do. Um, the video for this is actually, um, it, there is another video for this that I did a long time ago that I can go over the animal prints again for everybody. If you want to do that now, or if you just wanna go back and watch the other video, just let me know. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use a red, I'm just going to use one red marker for right now. I'm just going to use R29 just because that's easier. Let me scoop my chair up so I can actually reach the table. So um, one of the things that I like to do actually when I'm like trying to figure out new patterns and things is I'll just take my Sharpie pen. And I will just make, and this is just regular, my Copic paper that I use. And I will just make a box and I'll put several on the paper. And like one thing I like to do, and this is good. I mean, you can do this with red, pink, purple. You can do this with any one you want, but I use the chisel end. And I just, whoops, that did not sound good. And I just move it back and forth, kind of like to where it looks like the peanuts. Granted, I usually go a little bit slower, so it looks a little nicer. But once you get one line drawn, you can use the other side because that's just like your base kind of. And you can use the other side to make it thicker. 
and really get it to look a little better because I definitely don't want mine looking like craziness here. So you can either make it thicker on one side or make it um, thinner on the other side. But all I do is I just go usually just over the top and over the bottom and it helps it look a little bit more rounded, a little bit more smooth. And this is really good for like sweaters or like boys shirts and you can even like take the thinner side and go like this. And then maybe on the top. Now it is starting to, if you did it in black and orange, this would totally look like um, Charlie Brown. That's all I can think of right now is Charlie Brown. So you can also do this, like say you want that to be the end of your thing. And I guess this would be kind of be called swatches. I don't know exactly. Everybody says different things for, you know, calls things different things that you can make another rectangle and you can always just hang on to this, but you just can even just and again I'm not doing this like perfect or anything like that, I'm not even trying to do it perfect. And then you can just go like this. And again, this is good for Easter. It's good for Halloween. It's good for just about anything. And if you watch the um, video that we did at the beginning of the month with skirts, we did this. And if you take, even on like this, if you take, I'm gonna turn this around just because this is going to be my top that you can take this and say put a thing here one here okay and you can just completely make this i mean i wouldn't suggest doing red if you're going to do a white skirt all the time just because the red will run just slightly um, but you can just take this and it will look like it's bent into shape of a skirt. If you do this, just pull it out a little bit. And I'm being really messy, so don't look at, don't exactly look at the technique, okay? Just pretend it's a skirt. Okay, so that was C1 that I used. And then if I use my carts all turned around, if I use C0, then I can pull this out a little bit more. And it looked actually looked a lot better because it's like it's running right here. So it's starting to bother me. But and then just kind of go this way a little bit. Let me finish doing this part. See, look, it just runs. It's so bad when you use red. But then if you use like, I don't know where my C3 is. I think it's in my refill bucket. Um, but here's C4. You kind of pull that up a little bit. But eventually it'll start to look like where is, I don't think I kept it. I think I threw it away. Let me see if I kept it or not. 
Here we go. So if you see here, you can put your pattern down first. And then if you want to make ruffles, here, let me raise this up a little bit. If you want to make ruffles, it'll actually look, put your pattern down first and then make your ruffles. And then it will look as if they're folded into the ruffles after you make your patterns. Okay. So it's easier to demonstrate when you have an actual, when you're not using red and it's just smearing everywhere, but is what it is. But you can put that on skirts. Do I have the skirt that I did? I don't think I do. Let me look. Let's see. Nope, I just have these ones. So we did polka dots and we did the flat, the different flowers. So there's just all, I mean, if you look at any type of fabric or anything, you can um, totally get different designs and things like that. Donna, do you want me to go over the animal print? I do. Okay. So I will go ahead and I'm just going to make some boxes here. And I usually have like a big folder that I keep all my stuff in. And so that's why I draw the boxes and then I just fill the boxes as I think of a new pattern. But I'm still unpacking boxes, so don't ask me where that book is at right now. So, so with the, the leopard and the cheetah is kind of the same. The base color is E21. Where is my E21? Here it is. So the base color is just E21. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put some base color down. You would obviously do, you know, like fill a shirt in or pants or whatever you're coloring in instead of just doing it this way. But this is a good way to practice the print before you actually put it on something. So cheetah, super easy. I use E57 or sometimes, let me see what this one is. This is, looks like E27 actually, but you can use any of them that you want. So what I'll do is I'm going to separate these three out. So I'm going to do E27 first and the spots are not perfect. They're just, all I do is I put my pen down and I just wiggle it. Okay. And I do some big and I do some small because none of their spots are the same. Okay, so that was E27 on that section. And then this is gonna be E57. You can see how they're really similar. It's just one's a little bit darker. Do I need to zoom in a little bit, Donna? Let me know. I think it's good. Okay, so there's 57. It's just, it's really dark here today. It's raining like, oh my God. I was worried we weren't gonna have power. It's raining so bad. So it's not really all that bright. So then I'm gonna go ahead and do E25 and you can tell there's not, there really isn't that much of a difference. It's just one's a little bit more gray. And then the E25 is just a little bit lighter than the rest. But for the most part, they all pretty much look the same. Let me zoom in because you can't really see the color from that low. Is that better? They kind of look all the same. They do. They all look the same. I'm telling you, they look the same. But here, we'll just go like this. So 
but I love it. <laughs> they do look the same. So this one's E25. This one's E27. No, E57. And this one was E27. So that's cheetah. It's just, it's so easy and basic. And then this one will make leopard. So this one starts out the same way as well with the E21. These are so easy and it's so funny because honestly, until I actually looked at a cheetah and a leopard, I was like, what? how do people expect me to color this? So my, e, my 21 needs to be refilled, obviously. So this one, I actually use E20 that, or E29, and then I use E24. So the E24, or excuse me, Lord have mercy. Um, why are 24? I just make the dots first and I make some small, some big, make sure that they're irregular and I just put them randomly everywhere. I mean, they're kind of, kind of the same as a leopard or a cheetah, I mean. My brain is not working. On rainy days, I have the hardest time thinking. I don't know what my deal is. So I just put that down with the E24. And then I just do little half moons with the E. God dang it, I did it again. I said E24. It's YR24. Holy mac and cheese. I'm going to need a nap, I think. But I just do little half circles just around even like little thin ones around the tiny dots and just make sure they're going in different directions that they're not all going the same direction and everybody makes this look so hard but it's really not and these are irregular too. So, I mean, if you press down too much or, you know, oh, you went too far or you didn't go far enough, that's quite all right. There we go. And that is cheetah print. So giraffe is E21 as well. Um, and with the cheetah, if you want to go a little bit darker, you can go black. Here, I'll show you what the black looks like. He's like a C9 now that I think about it. But you can do, because I know some, I see some animal print out there that's brown with the red and then I see some that's black with the red. So I think it just, I don't know what it depends on. But you can see the difference between the black and this is C9 and the other was E29. So you can see the difference between the two. Zebra is, um, Zebra and tiger kind of hard. Um, I like looking at an actual picture of a zebra or a picture of a tiger to make it easier to copy their stripes. Um, giraffe is easy as well. Giraffe is just, again, E21. I'm just gonna lay the background down here. And it's just streaky because I'm using the um, side of my pen. 
And then, um, then Cindy, can you mute? Sorry. Your button? Yes. You're fine. I was just yes. like, I thought my kids were listening to the TV, like super loud. I was like, what in the heck's going on? I was like, God, they're being loud. I was ready to yell out. <laughs> oh. So, I just, with, sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. So, this one, I just go ahead and do just random, like, little blocks around. Just like this. And it's just. And you can look at a giraffe online on Google and do the same thing. And you can make irregular ones. They don't have to be rectangle or absolute squares. There we go. There we are. And you can even, um, if you want to, I mostly, when I do it, I will pretty much just use this color. I'll use E25. And then later, if you wanna do, like say you're doing like this as part of a neck or something like that, and you need shading from the sun, you can always just go in with, your E, this is E29. My brain is so lost, I'm having to look at the numbers now and like read them off. And then just go ahead and go back with the E25 and just kind of pull that out. But again, the shapes are really, if you look at a giraffe, they're not the same. They're all irregular. And you can just make small ones and make large ones. It's pretty easy. So with the tiger, that one is E24 and E27. Um, and then it's just like C9, or you can use a 100. Um, I usually start with the wire 27 on the outside, and that's for the shading. So I'm just going to do a little bit of that. And then you can use the 24, the YR24, to kind of pull the rest of that in and lighten it up. But you definitely want to do, like if you're coloring something, you want to do this part first. And like, if it's a pair of pants, color all your pants in first, like completely color the plant, the pants, and then go ahead and do this. So for this, it's just a series of thick and thin lines. So I usually just kind of, I don't, I don't know how to explain this, but I just make sure that they all kind of go in the same direction. You want to make some thicker, some thinner. But again, the easiest way is to look up a picture of a tiger on Google. So I usually just make sure that it's just like, you know, a series of small ones and you can do like make that a little bit bigger and then you can kind of come around this way 
and go up and come back down. So kind of go and just make them just random kind of weird lines if you want. I mean, it's pretty much up to you. You can even kind of go like this and then fill it in. That needs to come up a little bit. But a lot of them just have like several little lines just coming off of one line half the time. And they're really kind of close together. And they have a lot of thicker lines to follow as well. Okay. So that one, these ones look a little bit thicker. This looks more like tiger over here, but you can play with it. And that's the meaning of doing a lot of these different little boxes because that'll give you practice and it'll give you time to actually play with what you're doing and say, okay, I like this one. I don't like that one so much, but it'll show you, oh, I like the way I did that one. So I'm just going to make another little box here. Now, zebra is really easy for the simple fact that it's just black and white, but that is the only thing that's easy. It's just as hard as tiger. So with zebra, I usually make my first initial line like right down the middle, okay? And then I will go off. And I will just keep going off that side. And I do use the side of my pen, which is, you guys know, is not normal for me. So, but I'll start out a little bit thinner on this side and kind of really push down on the other side. So then you can also like come down here, have a little stripe here, whatever you want. But for the most part, zebra's lines are all pretty, just kind of go with the flow of their body. It's funny, I can take my daughter to the zoo and she just calls, she's like, I don't understand, they're just striped horses. Makes me laugh every single time. So, and they also have things that go like this in certain places. And then you can kind of go up like this. Once I find um, a pattern that I like, I tend to stick with it and just practice that pattern because it's just, it's easy. And then that's zebra. So you just kind of, like I said, it's just a lot easier to look at because there's not really a way to explain how to do zebra except for to look at the zebra and kind of try to mimic their, their lines. Same with a tiger. Cheetah, leopard, giraffe, it's easy. So I need to, my next animal that I wanna try to learn to do is like the wrinkles and the wrinkliness of the, um, elephant skin too. I think that would be fun since there's a lot of elephant images out there. I think it would be, I just really think that would be a lot of fun. So let me get another box. So we already went on to like flowers and stuff, but another one that's really good for like boy stuff is plaid. And you can even do like, I mean, if you want to do like girls kilts or whatever, you could do that too. Um, plaid is super easy. There's a few different ways. 
you can either do your pen that way or you can even just straight down thick and then just you can make a pattern out of it and this is where I don't use my chisel a whole lot you can see because I'm not very good at it um but it's good for making those thicker patterns but you can just kind of go down I mean you could even leave it like this if you're doing like a pillow or curtains or I don't know something you need stripes for put a thin one over here and then I mean if you just wanted to use one color you can just go across the other way and look all of a sudden it's plaid and you can even use the chisel for straight thin lines whatever you need it for so another one you can do which I like to do on boys especially if you like like the La La Land crafts um Luca, I like his shirts. His shirts are nice and easy, but for his, I like to kind of go down like this. This takes a little while with a box this big. It probably should have just done a, a square. And then I will go like this and then you can take like say a YR24 and please use different colors that you like don't don't pick these so but you can just kind of go in between and make it colorful and you can even like if you want to go back this way, if you wanted to, and then you can even get your white marker in there, and you could do like little thin lines in between all the little orange ones. Granted, if there's room, just for like some extra little highlight in there, an extra color, because sometimes that helps. You can even go over the green, the thicker green line if you want, and then just go that way. I mean, there's so much things you can do with just lines. There's also been times that make another box where you can just like say we're just going to fill this in. And I mean, you can just do polka dots, you can just do flowers. I mean, there's just so much. But one I like to do, especially like on pants or sweaters, is you can just kind of go one, make one line like this and just go all the way across. You guys have probably seen me do this one where I just go all the way across. This one is just so quick and easy, especially if you don't really feel like doing a whole heck of a lot. And you can just, and then do two lines going the other direction, just like this. And that just makes a really nice pattern and it's quick and it's easy. And you don't have to really do much of anything except for shading the green or whatever you're going to use. 
You just have to watch about getting close together like I did right here, I just got too close. So it just gives you lots of options on what you can even do with just a white gel pen. So you could even, um, let's see. Make another box. Actually, I'm just going to make a couple boxes here. So you can, I'm just using whatever colors that I have sitting here. So don't worry about the colors. But I'm just going to fill this in. And you know, if something can look pretty with this color on a dress, it'll look pretty. So you can just take and make flowers. And just do it randomly. That makes it easy as well. And you can make them big like this, or you can make them super tiny, however you want. Flowers are just a really easy one to do. And then once you get it all filled in, you can just fill it in with little polka dots to fill in those empty areas. And that'll bring more texture to it. Another one that you can do let me go ahead and just fill this in real fast. Okay. But another one, just fill it in and then do like one little circle in the center, okay? And then you do you can do more circles on the outside. And the white gel pen, the way it creates kind of like a little puddle in the center makes it look super cute. Let me lift this up so you can, maybe, maybe not so you can see. Okay. I haven't done this one in a long time. Maybe now that I've reminded myself of it, I'll do it some more. But you can even like go like this and then space out your dots too. And it'll still look like a little flower. And you can just put little dots in those too to kind of fill that area in. But these are just, if you have problems with other flowers or anything like that, this is just a quick, easy way to make flowers by just doing little tiny dots. It's so easy. Is there any patterns that you guys are interested in that um, you want to tell me about? I don't even have the little chat box open. Let me open that. Or not. So, um, how I did, let's see, what else is there? You guys already know we did denim. We've done the roses on the other, in the other class this month. Um, we've done chevrons, we've done plaid, which I'm sure from plaid, you can figure out stripes too. Um, help me out guys. Is there yellow gel pens or just white? Um, I think, let me go see, hang on. I have some spectrum pens. They're not perfect. Um, I know I can get gold 
and stuff. Um, I can look on Amazon. Ooh, these have rabbit hair on them. You can tell I don't use them. Holy mac and cheese. They are hairy. So here's, it's not a gel pen. It's just a, what is this? An art liner. But you can, you don't have to use a gel pen. You can use the art liners too. Oh yeah, they would be cute. So let me see. I don't know if it'll show up on the green or the, yeah, here we'll do it right. Well, that's not gonna work either. We need a background for the white gel pen. So you can do that. Uh, they're not showing up on the green, but let me see. I have gold. So gold doesn't look too fantastic to me, but I'm not a gold kind of person. I actually use this for like if I'm doing kimonos or something for you know Asian type stuff. But there's all kinds of gel, there's all kinds of different gel pens. Um, if you look on, let me see. My fingers would stay off of screen. I don't know if I have Amazon on, yeah, I do. Oh, never mind. That's not going to work because I have to sign in. But if you look on Amazon, there's lots of um, there's lots and lots of different colors that you can choose from. So, um, but just make some di different boxes. You can go if you go on Pinterest and look up um, fashion prints or something like that which is a, what I do a lot, which there's not a whole lot, but even if you go to a fabric store or something like that, you can look to see what kind of prints there are and just make little boxes like this and just make yourself a whole, like put them in a book and you know, you'll have a whole bunch of different samples and you can go through your sample book. So, that is all I have for today. Do you guys want to turn on your mics and ask me any questions real fast? If not, then I'm, I think we're done for today. Christina, I thought everything was great. Thank you so much for sharing your talent again with us. Oh, no problem, honey. And if you think of any other patterns like, oh, wait, you know what? Let me see if I can pull it out of my head real fast because I usually have to look at a picture. Let me see if I can do it. I'm not guaranteeing anything here. So for like a cable sweater, what I usually do is I will just draw like a little line right here just to keep myself on track. But I usually do it with pencil, okay? Don't, I don't do it with pen but I just kind of go like this. And I'm just laying it down. And you can you do this for like flowers too. Lay your pen down like this. And then you can kind of go with a different color, obviously. Let me see if I can get my lighter color. Um, where, where's, give me this one, I'll use this one. But if you just kind of fill in in between, it kind of gives you like a little, a different little pattern. 
I mean, it doesn't look completely like a cable sweater, but it's a different little pattern. I think it just doesn't look right because of the colors I'm using. So I'll get some right colors and remember how I did it before. Um, Cause I did it on a couple of Marcy's, but it was pretty much just laying it down like this. And then you just kind of keep, maybe it's cause I didn't keep going with it. I don't know. But I do have a video on it. I will find the video on it because I can't, for some reason, my brain is just dead today. Um, but cable net sweaters, I'll find it and um, I'll comment on it for you, Donna, so that, or all of you, so that you guys can see it, okay? Um, another thing I was gonna tell you guys is when I put the, I know somebody was saying they couldn't find the calendar or something and they didn't print it out, you can actually, um, there's like a little thumbtack thing on the posts and you can actually um, pin that to the top of your feed so that you can find it for next time. Like say I put something out, you can pin it and then go back to it later. That way um, you can find it again. Is it hard to erase pencil once you lay? Yes, you cannot erase the pencil once you lay down the Copic. Um, it will not erase. It is there forever. So unless it's something that you want to have in your picture, um, I would erase it really soft so that you can't see it. But I will find the video for the sweater and if I can't find it, I will just remember how I did it and I will do another um, video for you guys. We do have to do, next week we're doing translucent um, clothes. So maybe I'll bring it up then as well if I remember, okay? So I will see you guys later unless you have more questions. Any more? Debbie, I can see you. You're just sitting there. <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> so, okay. I guess I will see you guys later. And I hope you have a lovely weekend. Mine is doing nothing but raining. So we're not supposed to have rain or sun until next week sometime. Let's see. Oh, no, you're fine, sweetheart. It's yesterday, I was just, I was in a really good groove with doing my college courses and I did not, I had my headphones on so I didn't hear Alexa tell me it was time. And I just, I kept doing school until like right when I posted that yesterday. So I'm super sorry about that. I was just, yeah, in a groove let's see thank you honey so i will see you guys later and i hope you have a great weekend bye